What's up, folks? This is Dan from Discern. Welcome to episode number nine of the Discern Recap, where I bring you a small selection of my favorite new albums, EPs, and singles from the broad category that is Christian music. New episodes of this show drop every Wednesday. If you want to be sure you don't miss any episodes, please subscribe to the channel. I would love it if you subscribed. You will get all my new music recommendations sent right to your subscription page. If you uh, want to get involved in the show, you know, you have something to say, you can comment below. You could tweet at me, at Discern Reviews. You could send me an email, discernreviews at gmail.com. Reach out, positive or negative, whatever you got to say. Um, what new music have you been uh, excited about? You know, what new music would you recommend? And speaking of recommendations, we got four this week. So uh, let's get to it. Recommendation number one, Adam Young, RMS Titanic. Adam Young, we know him pretty well by this point of Owl City fame and countless other side projects. Um, this side project here is Adam Young Scores, something he kicked off just a month ago. What he's attempting to do is create a score each month focused around stories that are important to him. These are not scores that are accompanying a piece of film. In fact, the only visual component is a um, poster designed by uh, artist James R. Eads. Um, and last month, Adam gave us a score based on Apollo 11, the Apollo 11 mission, you know, the first man uh, who stepped on the moon. And for the month of March, he's created a score based on the Titanic. It's his first score dealing in tragedy and death and despair um this story you know forced him to address emotions and situations unlike anything he dealt with in his previous score and and i think adam really flexes his his composition muscles even more here with really beautiful pieces um like how he captured the the scene in southampton uh, in england where the titanic set out to sea or the uh, regal captain-like melodies from the brass in the song Captain Edward Smith. Um, he also manages to take away all the comfort that a, a passenger on the Titanic must have felt and, and replaces it with this bleak, frightening arrangement, like, like in the songs uh, Sinking and Every Man for Himself. These songs are, are just so dark and, and disconcerting that I, I found myself not looking forward to hearing them again. Uh, the shrieking strings, the powerful brass, pounding sudden drums. It's all very unsettling, um, which is, I guess, a huge compliment given the scenes that he's portraying here. Uh, overall, I, I thought the score from February, the Apollo 11 score, was, was slightly better than this score. Um, I thought this one was just not as consistently unique, and uh, this score had more moments that just sounded like a typical score um and you know there's not a lot of those moments by any means but you know i, I think overall adam did knock it out of the park on this one on, on many different levels but when you look at apollo 11 and it had this characteristic mellow deep warm guitar that was featured at, at times throughout the record um and this score just you know doesn't have that signature sound on Apollo 11 that that became sort of a signature sound that you would hear as it as it came up at different points it was uniquely his and, and this this score just doesn't have that there's nothing to point to and say yep that's that is uniquely Adam Young uh, writing this score even so I love this I still did um, his use of texture and mood matched the story brilliantly uh, there were numerous moments where I was truly amazed at how accurately he was painting the scene, like on the, the track Lookout Duty. I mean, the production from the, the ambient noise and the drone is so icy, and, and there's these frigid echoing strings. I mean, that, that whole score is just straight up cold, lifeless sound. I mean, just like the sea must have been. Um, you can you can feel it. You can feel the uncertainty uh, of what's out there amidst the the fog and the darkness. Really, really well crafted. Um, I think overall, Adam just he shows that yet again there is so much more of a brilliant mind that he has than you see um, in his 
commercial pop of late from, from Owl City. So three tracks that I really enjoyed uh, to get you started. Captain Edward Smith, The Iceberg, and Sinking. Moving on, recommendation number two, K Sparks' Seasons Theme. K Sparks is a hip hop artist and rapper from the, well, from Southside, Jamaica, Queens, New York. And according to Wikipedia, yeah, listen to this. He's released over a hundred mixtapes and three major releases. So his major hip hop career didn't really begin until 2013, but he's been making music since 1993. And you know, I think those 20 years of work really, really shows because on this new album, uh, K Sparks is dropping some serious research requiring bars all over the tracks. I mean, he's the type of rapper who, who desperately needs some good rap genius annotations. Um, his metaphors are like inside jokes, you know? You know he's getting at something, um, but you just don't quite understand it. You can't quite put your finger on it. Uh, I almost feel like to best understand his message and appreciate his wit, you have to sit at the computer and Google phrases almost every other line. Um, because half the time, if you aren't really listening or you aren't really thinking, it's like, what are you saying? What? I mean, they just, the, the, the metaphors are, are deep and they're narrow. They're very focused many of times, so. Anyway, beyond, beyond his lyrics, uh, his flow is really reminiscent of like Lupe Fiasco or Kendrick Lamar. Um, in the Christian community, he reminds me a lot of Jay Givens. Uh, the sound and the, the production on this record is very urban. I, th I think it really carries that sound of Jamaica Queens. It's, it's soulful, it's rooted in, in a lot of jazz and R&B sounds and samples. It's a little on the dark side. It's, uh, it's also filled with these old school rap influences like DJ scratches and, and short audio samples and snippets. I mean, he slips in audio clips from TV shows, movies, news broadcasts, YouTube videos, just all over the place. Uh, and I think most of the clips he uses really, really further the message of the track. Um, and it, they, they, they push it along and give you a, a greater perspective, I guess, of what he's pointing to. Um, sometimes, though, they do run a little long. They, they drag out a little too much, but it's not, not a track killer or anything. Um, if anything is detrimental to the tracks, it's probably that the beats on, on some of these are they're absent of almost any melody. They're very quirky and, and almost a bit clunky, but they're just far too repetitive. Um, there's some one or two bar phrases that just roll over and over and over. And it, it's not too bad the first time around. I, I mean, the first time I listened to these tracks, I, I barely noticed it. But the more times you hear these tracks, the more annoying the repetition becomes. It's almost like you can't unhear it. That's, it's all your brain keeps focusing on. Um, like on the tracks, for example, Numbers or uh, Pardon My Back. Um, anyway, the last thing I, I do want to mention about this album, it's got a good amount of, of social commentary, which is nothing new to hip hop. Um, but he's got a lot of sharp edges in his bars. Uh, as the spoken word section says in the, in the opening track, Spring, he says, this ain't no fairy tale. Um, and before I forget too, this, that spoken word, now that I mentioned it, I love the performance from the spoken word sections in this record. Such a smooth, rich voice, uh, really unified, I think, too, with the mood and the tone of the album. Just having that narrator come in and, and, and bring you back and sort of focus the theme of the record and I, I thought it tied everything together really well too. Anyway, in his lyrics, K Sparks, you know, he tries to avoid any possibility of being fake uh, and spits exactly what he's thinking, even if that means using a Hitler metaphor in poor taste, I thought. Um, sharply calling out folks on, on race issues on both sides and uh, and walking that line, you know, between crude and honest. Um, like he said, ain't no fairy tale. So it's, it's gritty. Anyway, three tracks I really enjoyed to get you started. Make it look easy because that is the second track on the album. Hashtag trendy. 
and him versus her seasons. Third recommendation here, we're halfway there. Tyson Matzenbacher, Letters to Lost Loves. Tyson Matzenbacher, who I mentioned a few weeks ago, a few episodes ago, is a singer-songwriter from the West Coast, and I believe this is his debut full-length record. He has released an EP previously, but um, I believe that's it. And for a first album, what an album this is. Um, this record is downright heartbreaking. You know, you don't even really have to know, I think, that much about the artist for it to just hit you in the chest. Uh, the very first track lays the story out, you know, telling you of his his sick mother. I mean, she, she weighs only 90 pounds, just how graphic and, and uh, image-evoking that is. Uh, and and he, it speaks of Tyson's conflicted heart and as he prays for her and he sees things just getting worse and... Um, this album as a whole is a, a letter to his mother, his, his lost love who did die a few years ago. And uh, she was obviously a strong, faithful mother and wife, greatly loved by her family. Um, much of this album is, is delicate and patient and reflective. Uh, the guitar work, noticeably on the softer songs especially, is, is really emotionally driven. It's just emblematic of the, the tender honesty in his lyrics. Um, I think this album is just tasteful overall. Um, I think the songs are paced really well. They're they're never grander or smaller than they should be. You know, they aren't they aren't pompous or gaudy, um, but they're not meek and underwhelming either. Uh, I, I just think you get a good mix of of the joy and the sorrow that Tyson has gone through in the last few years, like on uh, the song "House in the Hills." I mean, it's just it's this picturesque remembrance of his mother and, and the house where he grew up um, or the song Honest I mean these these songs make you want to smile and cry at the same time uh, you feel the loss that his family has felt and and yet he conveys a, a warmth that carries on from the memories and, and from the places his mother's left behind um, and I'm really glad too that the single I mentioned a few weeks ago can't come home again has such a lovingly and caringly placed context around it. Uh, this album is obviously a labor of love, possibly, possibly out of necessity. Uh, you know, it's there's times where you have to write music to get something out. It's it's cathartic in that way. Um, really, really, I'm I'm thankful for this record. I I'll definitely be listening again and again for a while, and uh, probably crying again and again. Really good, really emotional, powerful album. Three tracks that I really enjoyed. In Your Name, that is the first track on the album. Evangeline, and the track Honest. And finally, we come to our last recommendation, Archibald, with their album Relativity. Archibald is an indie rock band from Albuquerque, New Mexico, with influences from post-rock, alternative rock and even some pop punk. Uh, these guys have been at it since 2013 when they dropped their debut album Archives and they have been slowly leaking out new songs uh, from this record over the last year um, with their Library Sessions live album. And this record here, Relativity, is I think Archibald that they're most aggressive and most confident um, there's lots of really tight, unified performances, you know, surprising sections of fierce yelling and heavy instrumental breakdowns, I mean, and a good amount of poppy, energetic, pop-punk style guitar work. Um, I think overall they, they took this album less seriously on its face uh, than their past release, because there, there are certainly songs here that, that carry deep, thought-provoking lyrics, uh, but they're usually couched in music that's more focused on rocking and dancing than anything. Uh, honestly, I thought the softer and more reserved moments were never the jaw-dropping moments on the record. It, it felt like there was always a brewing energy that was, was hard to contain, and these tender moments um, never really fully settled in for me. Uh, like the best moments uh, on this album where it, where it just felt unified and solid were those those louder songs like The Great Composer or uh, Cannibal Heart. Um, 
you know, this is their this is their bread and butter. Uh, every part of this band sounds at its peak in those moments. The the strong pushed vocals, the intricate guitar work, uh, power and drive from the bass and the drums. Uh, and then, then there's those moments too with the spoken word just shouted passionately over the top. I mean that that's the good stuff right there. Uh, lyrically, I really do appreciate too what these songs are doing. They're they're well crafted and, and they're heart spilling. A lot of things he says, you know, whether in the lead vocal parts or in the the spoken word sections, are are feelings that are entirely relatable to uh, to Christians. You know, it, the lyrics aren't trying to relate to you, you know, through vague swaths of meaningless cliches. They're organic, they're, they're poetic, uh, but they're identifiable. Um, I definitely recommend giving this album a listen. These, these guys are a, a small group, but they're, they're a strong, creative voice that's, that's writing things that you know, point us back to Jesus, our, our daily need for him, and to remember his, his faithful, unending love. Uh, just thankful for, for what these guys are doing. and Great music, great lyrics, um, good stuff. Check it out. Three tracks I would recommend um, if you're just looking to jump in, see what it's like. Relativity, the title track, Cannibal Heart, and Miss Lay and Finding the Way. So, that is all, folks. That's all the recommendations I have. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching the Discern recap. Thanks for sticking with me until the end. Thanks for uh, bearing with the uh, dryer that was going off and buzzing, uh, if you heard that. Please subscribe if you enjoy this content. Uh, if you want to support this show, please subscribe. Uh, I'm thankful for each and every one of you who do subscribe and, and do watch this and engage. New episodes releasing every Wednesday. Uh, if you have a particular album that you've been enjoying, something you want to recommend, let me know. You can comment below. You could tweet at me, at Discern Reviews. You could send me an email, discernreviews at gmail.com. Uh, of the songs I mentioned, did you listen to any of these? What did you think of them? You know, good or bad? I want to know. Reach out. Don't be shy. Anyway, I hope this helped. See ya.